Hello and welcome, Meta Lenicic, to the Slovenia Australia channel. I should say thank you for having us in the three Triple Z studios here in Melbourne. We are welcome. That's pleasure. It's a simply pleasure. You're welcome. Meta, you were born in Slovenia. Where were you born? What area? What uh, town? Ah, you Ah, well, Nagorenskem, to, uh, you know. You said you've been to Slovenia. Yes, beautiful yeah, place up there. Near yeah. Ausenik. Near Bled up there. Near Bled, yes. Um, yeah. Actual village's name was Posavec. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's near Brezje. You know Brezje, the, the big church? Yeah. Which everyone, I think, whoever comes to Slovenia goes to church in Brezje. That's very where I'm from. So what kind of things did your family do back then when you were growing up? Um, my father was a bus driver so and my mother was at home with a lot of other ladies then were at home because there was no job, was no work. But my mother was very, very, um, very, you know, nice lady like she knew how to knit. She was a professional cook she knew exactly, you know, she done a lot of lovely things. So, yeah, she, it was a beautiful life when we were growing up. So what was it like in general life for you back then? Um, well, we were young, as young, sort of, uh, I think the kids don't know much, but um, the love of was absolutely, was village, was people, was, um, you know, we got uh, a lot of friends and the school and all the rest of it was terrific, it was really nice. Yeah. I believe this is, uh, this year is 50 years since you arrived in Australia, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, in uh, March, sort of, um, yeah, Mumba weekend, sort oh. of, yeah, I'll never forget. Um, yeah, Melbourne was festive, the Yarra River, water skiing, so many people, but I did not stay here. I traveled back again, which I promised I come to Sydney, which I did then go to Sydney. So just thinking back 50 years ago, why did you leave Slovenia? Well, um, I was a draftswoman in a big factory Iskra. And those days uh, was terrific work, which I worked at um, at the electrical, um, um, you know, things where they, I was a draftswoman there or so. Um, and that year, the whole, um, this part of that where we worked, went to Ljubljana, you know, they have to change, there's no more room in there. So, and been living right up North Yak in Gorenska, so what chance did I have to travel to Ljubljana every day? None. Mm. So, and I was really left sort of on my own, like five years. I worked in, in a factory in, in Iskra, so where I go from there? So, um, I asked my dad or mom, I would love to go overseas, so I love to go to maybe America, um, but there was the same thing, was no job for me as such work what I knew. So then my mom said, well, just go ahead and look around, So which I did. So uh, opportunity came. Um, so my father had some friends over here. So uh, we make a deal. So I went and uh, that's here, I come here, by big liner. Yeah, it took one month to come over. So. so your impressions of Australia when you arrived here, what do you think? Oh, it was such a different, such a... Well, when you're young, you don't know the work kind of thing. It was just the city, the towns, the, the big buildings and the big cars. And that was, you know, a completely different thing. Mm. Did you settle in Melbourne when you came here or did you go somewhere else? No, um, I settled in Sydney. So, yeah, and then I met my husband, Peter in Sydney, but as I say, I never liked that big cities, it was too, we were not used to it, so I said, no, I can't stand that. So one day we just, um, like say, both of us, he didn't like it, I didn't like it, we packed the car and went, we went to Melbourne. So, and since then we are here. Looking back over this past 50 years, how has Australia changed, do you think? 
Australia changed a lot. Uh, like, you know, you, when we came, of course, everybody first had to go to work to earn some money that you can leave. And those days were really still good. Um, of course, I could not find the job that I did. But then you have to, of course, do what it's there to do. So I did. Uh, and was money was okay. M my husband was a painter, so he was uh, doing so. Yeah, and soon after that, we had a family, two girls, and the school went on and so on. And from then on, we just kind of struggled from year to year. And the years were good. We were healthy uh, at work. And that was okay. Your passion is Slovenian heritage. Yes. Uh, and culture. Why are you passionate about Slovenian heritage? Well, as as I say, um, I've been lucky enough to be involved even in Slovenia at school. Uh, had a good school. We had um, uh, folklore dancing. We had we did plays. We did. Um, you know, those years when I grew up in 60s, when I sort of remember being 18, 19, in those years, they were terrific years, especially just open up, just start living. You know, I remember, uh, you know, we just uh, girls went together and went Sunday afternoon into a dance, into a big halls. And this was really, really beautiful. That's what I, you know, and then... I like the, as I say, um, concerts and uh, operas and all this. That that was my passion always, you know. Yeah. Why do you think it's important to maintain Slovenian presence or heritage or culture here in Australia? Yeah, this is a very big question. Like um, when we came, we didn't know anything else. So of course take us or took us about how long even now 50 years later I still remember everything in Slovenian like my English is sort of more like background like uh, everything else is happening around my life is in Slovenian like then here Slovenian clubs Slovenian radio Slovenian friends Slovenian church everything around Slovenia and then when you ca you just cannot get away from it so uh, that's why now I'm, I'm very proud of it that is everything around Slovenia because we had beautiful and I've been back to Slovenia many times and I had uh, very good memories or uh, you know things from Slovenia from my parents from my home and relatives and really I you know that's my passion mm -hmm. since 1978 you have been actively involved with the Slovenian Association Planica in Melbourne yeah in a number of functions secretary president 10 years folklore dancing teacher the Planica bulletin yep why have you taken on all of these tasks yeah, it, as I said, it didn't happen all at once. It sort of gradually, for, you know, first of all, when I've been introduced to Planica, was very beginning of it, you know, and then uh, we just start uh, meetings and needs to be, right, uh, you know, really uh, written down what we talk about and then what we did talk about was start building of the new clubs. And when they were building people donate money so need to be written down need to be you know put down so then we start thinking how we're gonna do that so we did eventuate that we're gonna uh, you know start writing uh, planitza um, uh, let, uh, not letter but just a brochure so we start with number one with we wasn't sure how, how how far we'll go how it's gonna be but as I say from months to months to year from year to year it did get better and bigger and more professional. I mean, professional, what we call professional, uh, the best we could do. And it went for until now. So now it's 30 years, which we never thought of at the beginning. But it's good. Things was written down. Pictures were there. Pictures are there. So everything is there to see for now, for, you know, for generation 
from now to see what we did, how it was done, and all that. Yeah. What gives you satisfaction in doing all of these things? When I can see results, um, then, you know, in these happy days, we start dancing, and then they said, oh, but we could do folklore dancing, which we see. Yeah, I said, yeah, I did that back home, you know, back in Slovenia. So we start learning around all the people. And then we did for five years. We traveled around, we, we, we did beautifully. So we had our own musician, we had eight pairs of us, and oh, we enjoyed it. But then the younger people came, and they want to dance as well. So I said, okay, so enough of us. But then we start now, put, uh, you know, our love for that back to the younger ones. And we did. For 10 years, young people did dance. So we did, um, you know, youth, pro youth concerts. Every club has their own concerts and all this. So we, we sort of travel around and we went around Australia twice. Like, you know, there's your yeah, yeah, um, um, Ladinsky concert. And it was fantastic. So I remember every one of them. We've been to South Australia. So we've been to Sydney, Canberra, um, Melbourne, Queensland. Um, I mean, yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. In the role of president of the club, what were your objectives? What were you trying to achieve? What were you... Yeah, as I say, maybe there is not such a new thing to say, but years of hard work, people like all of us, which now it's a, a, a big membership of Planitza members. Um, as we remember now, we came when we were about 20 to 30 years old. Now it's 50. Now, what we now become is uh, a lot of people cannot work anymore as we did at the beginning. So now, you know, the big hole becoming like a hole of small becoming bigger and bigger. So now we have to sort of understand that um, how we can do uh, work the same with less people, which was impossible. So because the club is very big, you know, and the uh, I don't know why at the first place they had to be so big, but still people thought that forever will be there forever. So, yeah, now we can see there is no such thing. Um, no, and um, so, yeah, and it, the last three years now was declining, declining, and of course, but, um, you know, you buy things, expenses, was becoming bigger and lesser attendance and all sort of things which you know yourself it doesn't progress it doesn't go nowhere so we had to turn around we have to change we have to according to the people uh, how much you can do that much you can expect them to do and that's why you know becoming really hard and in that year of uh, 2010 we thought that we can turn around, but we had two young, younger generation, younger men, uh, to help us, like a treasurer and um, and uh, um, Tainik, what um, uh, secretary. Yeah, secretary, yes. Uh, even those two, they could not see our going anywhere because the club was too big really not enough people to to help or to do so we have to slow down again now it's again uh, we got a new president now it's a lady it's Ivanka Kulachko she put herself into it to help to see if that can be salvaged you know can be done something to keep it not to lose it yeah, if we can somehow get the word towards the young people, we'll try. As the organiser of the Planetza Bulletin, how many times a year is that publication published? A bulletin. Yeah, we start with bulletin in uh, 1980. As I said, that time was very important to put things down, you know, 
uh, that we know what we're doing, where it went, and what it went for. So now, at first, first uh, was four bulletins a year, and then uh, the last four, 10, 15 years was still four, and the last five years was only three, then two, and in year 2010 was only two, and then none. And this year, I think we'll be having it again one a year. Because as I said, first of all, it's not even nothing to write about, uh, because it does sort of normal events do happen, but it's no such thing like it was then, you know, with a lot of writing to do, this happened, that happened, and who came, and this, you know, but now it's, yeah. Is it in Slovenian or English? Or? It's all in Slovenian. Oh, lately we do have a couple of pages of English as well. Meta, you also love to travel, and you are an organizer of trips around Australia and overseas. Yeah. What kinds of trips have you organized in Australia? Oh, all sorts of trips, yeah, sort of. I was um, inspired by another lady, a couple of ladies, and so we did it together, and especially around uh, Melbourne, around Victoria. So we, we've been really countryside. We've been to Queensland, to Northern Territory, to Tasmania, to, you know, really like what we see then. People would love to travel, but um, how can you? You know, husband probably wasn't really fit enough to drive the car or the lady didn't. So, but we took the bus and that was fantastic. It was really beautiful because people were happy. We had a good groups, terrific times, and we seen a lot, remember plenty, and had a really, really enjoyed it. So what kind of things, what kind of trips did you do overseas? Overseas? Oh, we went uh, to America, sort oh. of, to meet all these American people. So we, we went to all the American Slovenian clubs, uh, to Canada, to to um, Chicago, to Le Monde, to all those places, which uh, Pater Method, uh, he was um, father here, or priest here, um, 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 you know, in Melbourne. So then he invited us over. So I said, oh, it would be beautiful. So he organized the bus. Uh, Forty people of us went, and we had a really terrific time. So we went a lot around and seen a lot and learned a lot. Kod pravijo, ta dežela je raj, ja je po svoje tove krojena. In mi tega ne spoštujemo ali ne jemljamo dovolj resno. Tudi v Viktoriji se nimamo s temi vetrovi in že tudi visoko uročeno kaj hvaliti. Vsi moramo vedno paziti drug na drugega. No, kaj bo pa še novega v času, ki ga imamo pred seboj, najnovejša poročila iz Slovenije, obvestila slovenske skupnosti, oglasila se bosta spet naša redna poroča Valka, torej prva je gospa Veronika Benedičič iz Radija po tepuh obled, in tudi naš zvesti poročevalec iz Radija obnišče gospod Matjaš Meljak se bo oglasil z njegovim poročilom. In 1991, you began presenting on the Slovenian radio program here in Melbourne. And to this day, you're still presenting. <laughs> still presenting, yeah. And here we are at the three Triple Z studios. <laughs> First of all, congratulations for those 22 years of broadcasting. That's a fantastic effort. Yeah, thank you very much. Why did you begin broadcasting? Why did I begin? Um, I really sort of... I don't know, I can't tell you why, but um, there was times when, again, as I say, I love Slovenian words, or speaking, you know, better than English, I suppose. Um, and then they asked me at the church one day, uh, could you just help us? Could you just come along and just help us to read this and that? And so we start there, we begin there like that. Just like now you can see here exactly the same. I invite people from, like I'm saying, uh, they come from Slovenia or they come, you know, can you come and help? Because this is community radio. This is like uh, um, everybody's, you know, you don't need to be a professional of anything. You just come. This is like our own program, Slovenian program comes to every home. And people, we are 
ordinary people we are, I don't know, uh, you know, and they love the music and they love the just simple news and not much politics the least can possibly have and all this, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice, it's really kind of friendly, friendly thing. So why do you love presenting on radio? Not that I love, but <laughs> sometimes it's become necessity because it's so hard, really it's hard because as I say, how long I'm working and I, I have not earned a penny or a dollar, they say, you know, that's how it is, that's how, that's, that it's, this is what the most thing for everybody is, you only give yourself out, but you don't receive anything back, because you work for the love of, which that's what I can't explain. And then when I talk to people, they laughed at me. I said, oh, well, fair enough. But everybody could, you know, of course, if you earn, of course it's better. But as I say, well, if I haven't got, I, I just haven't got. And there you are. How has the radio program changed? when you began in 91? Um, I don't know how it changed, not much, because we got, we got certain, certain um, um, program, we have to go really strictly by that, because we cannot do anything what we like. We got a very strict program, uh, has to go that, and um, yeah, otherwise, um, you know, because that's why the station's got a certain, certain um, uh, forms or format that we have to obey by that, you know, because it's very, very um, strict and so we can't really do as you want or, you know, what that, like that way. So what type of content do you include in your radio program? Uh, we got, um, like I would say in Slovenian, Puruchila, you know, the news, and then it's uh, uh, obvestila, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the drushtva, all this uh, community involvement and, and what they're preparing or what they're doing. And then music, we got 20 minutes to play music. And then we got, we got segments like three minutes. Each thing has to, like, say, three minutes or two minutes and a half or, you know, music as well. And so that, um, and no politics, no like politics, you do not um, talk over someone or about someone or because this is the formation things and you can be really sued and I don't particular allowed and I'm not doing it and I'm not allowing anybody else doing it because this is all goes back to me and when someone really, you know, sues you, you can lose your house. So I'm not prepared to doing that. The program is presented in Slovenian, is that right? Yes, it's in Slovenian. Uh, we are allowed to do as much as we want to do. Um, well, it was preferable maybe 10 minutes or something like that, but because we only had one hour, we are allowed to do most in Slovenian. Yeah. In odbore SDM se prisrčno zahvalijo vsem članom, ki so se odzvali delavni akcije na Hribu, v nedelju 20. oktobra. Zelo smo vam hvaležni za vso pomoč in dobro opravljeno delo. In še slovenski klub Jadran vljudno vabil se članem prijatelje na kusilo v nedeljo 3. novembra. Kusilo se bo serviralo po molitvah za naše rane na Kiloškem pokopališču. Rezervacije sprejema Milan Ogrizek na telefon 9366-3774. Istočasno obvešamo, da bodo klubski prostori odprti tudi vtorek, 5. novembra, na Melbourne Cup Day od 9. ure dalje. Vsi vabljeni na tradicionalno balinarsko tekmovanje, na spremljanje konjskih vdir s klubskimi stavami, tudi sweep in tudi na udeležbo v paradi s klubu, ki to bo pa nekaj čudovitega. In še rovanje v Penolo in Adelaide bo 26. do 30. decembra. Odhod po v četrtek 26. decembra po maši v 9. uri do povdne. Dve nočitvi bosta v mesto Montgambija, od tam bomo v petek poromali v Penolo, kjer se nam bodo pridružili rojaki iz Adelaide. V soboto 28. decembra se bomo skupaj odpeljali v Adelaide, 
kjer bo v nedeljo 29. decembra na praznik Svete družine slovesnost žegnanja v naši slovenski cirki Svete družine na 51. Janks Avenue v Ves Hit Marshall. Slovesnost bo vodil načko Adelare dr. Filip Wilson. V ponedelji 30. decembra bomo potovali nazaj v Melbourne, kamor prispemo pozno popovdne. Prijave seveda sprijema Marija Anžič. So in addition to presenting, you're also the convener of the program, in Con charge? Convener, yes. Yeah. So what does that function involve? Uh, function, as I say, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for the program. Like, um, we got guests, or we got music, or we got things to say, which I have to know at the beginning what we talk about, about what, or how we say it, or... Uh, we have to be very careful to say or to whom to say, because that's what I'm saying. I'm responsible. And I uh, attend all the meetings, and I am um, here with the station. That station tells me what to expect, what to do. And so we have to be, you know, really involved by that. You have a number of other people that assist you here. What kind of things do they do? Yeah, we had a panel operator, which um, everyone, whoever comes first to do work here, everybody must have training, have to do the train, which you, it's all about the paneling, about um, microphones, about preparing, about deformation, about everything else. So when you finish with this uh, training, you receive your certificate, and that certificate with that certificate, you can even go to work anywhere else in any other station, because you know a lot about it. Um, it is very, very. It is for free, like the a station pays for it, and it takes three months to do that. Yeah. So, do you have somebody else that helps you? Yes, as I say, we got the, and then I got, and you know, I'm lucky. Like uh, always, I got some help with the girls coming, helping, or. Anybody who can just an, a day or one hour or whenever, you know, I like to have different voices, different people to to help to more to be more variety of. Do they cover certain segments? Uh, not not particular, not. Um, as I say, we just go by. I think I make the program, and then we uh, between the week we talk about. Uh, can you do this? I would love to do that, and. Uh, somebody would, you know, who, who loves more music or loves more different things. So we can then compromise which is doing what better. So that's why we go. Poročila pa nadaljujemo z novicami Radija Slovenije. Na obisku Slovenije je bil šef Igarske skupine, ki so ga med drugim sprejeli premijer Kalin Gabratošček, finančni minister Uroš Čufar in guverner Banke Slovenije Poščan Jazbec. Šef Igarske skupine slovenske oblasti pozval Čim prejšnji izvedbi priporočil Bruslja za sanacijo bančnega sistema in konsolidacijo javnih financ. Zašel se je tudi s predsednikom Republike Borutom Pahorjo. Nicev in obitelj Ogora, da svoje odpadke odnesejo nazaj v dolino. Planinci so v minulih štirih leti pobrali za približno 20 ton odpadkov in napolnili več kot 100 tisoč vrič za smrti. The HESA project, which is the historical archives of Slovenians in Australia, is a very important one. How does the three triple Z Slovenian program contribute to this? Yeah, as I say, uh, it is really important for, as I say, not for us as much as but for the future. Uh, like a lot of young people will come and probably never hear about what we did or what happened and all that. But when they just look, sit and look and listen, and then probably this is the only way they can find out. What challenges do you see in future in presenting the three triple Z? Program. Challenge, um, I don't know, it's not enough people involved to be challenged. Um, I wish that they would, and I wish that, you know, a younger, as we always talk about, younger people come along. But I cannot see, I really don't, uh, because it is still in Slovenian, we talk Slovenian, if probably, eventually, changing to English maybe some Slovenian and more English, probably. We had a youth program years back, one hour a month was a youth program. Uh, 
which they could speak the whole program in English because they even station agree with it. Um, but then, of course, it's they get married, they had no time, that is work more important because this is all voluntary job. Um, we lost it. So now, again, we have to look forward again for the young, uh, younger people to bring them in. Meta, you report monthly uh, for radio in Slovenia, such as Radio Mischa and Radio in Bled. How did this come about? And what kind of topics do you report on? Ah, well, you just um, listen this tonight. Uh, well, we had Radio Gnišče in Radio Bled. Uh, how we come about? Uh, it was years back when I was in Slovenia. We come across, um, you know, with people talk, 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 and it just happened uh, first program, second program, and so on. But I said, no, um, I'm not going to send in you. I wish that you can send some back. So, and exactly that what happened. And it's still going 12 years. Radio Gnišče and Radio Blit is seventh year going. So they started, exactly, they started the radio uh, bleed, uh, exactly too. They're looking for people, for some other voices, for some other news. They find me, I don't know how come, but by the computer, by the surname, she tried, and so we just come from there. So it is beautiful, really. She, She's such a fantastic girl, she, you know, talk about things, Slovenian, what happened in there, and all the very important things what happened or places they go and things they see and terrific and so I'm the same I'm writing what happens here you know in that months or in that uh, either like spring or summer or what now especially it's a very sad to to talk about fire and and floods and you know all these winds and all that it's a lot to say how often do you do that uh, once a month once a month okay yeah when was the last time that you were in slovenia three months ago oh what was it like what did you think yeah that is very 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 sad story so i don't think i could even talk about uh, all my wishes and all my prayers, which I always have, my house, my home, it's no more. It's no more there. Um, Mom and Dad and my brother, they all now passed away. And now someone else is in that house and somehow we've got nothing to do with that anymore, which my heart had just died. Yeah, I'm very sad. As I say, Slovenia to me, as I say, I went through the village years back. Oh, hi, hi, how are you? How, how is it? Not even now, nobody, people getting old, a lot of them, they're not there anymore. Only younger people and people I don't know, they don't know me. I'm total stranger. Like both ways, we are all strangers. So to me, as I say, Slovenia, it's lost all the value in that way. Yeah. So how has it changed, even like when you were back there 50 years ago? 50 years ago, as I say, I could not say one thing that would be wrong. It was all so beautiful, so full of life, full of expectations, full of things were happening. You know, we were young, we met, we went, we danced, we all this now it's completely nothing anymore i don't know anyone anymore there so yeah meta lenarchich thank you very much for the interview thank you so much that was lovely hvala lepa no torej gremo dalje z naslednjo pesmijo ki je tam kjer sem doma in tudi sem